think for the, f for the first time in the history of MedTech, we have got to embrace the fact that talent planning should be at least as important as product portfolio development and a business strategy. Realistically, the people are the power and more than ever, we need to focus on, on our talent acquisition strategies. Oh gosh, I think it would be a miss to not mention COVID because I think it has accelerated a number of aspects that we perhaps haven't had a full appreciation of previously. Firstly, the skill set required to face the future. What got us here isn't going to get us there. And to quote one of the speakers earlier today, we need to be positioning our talent to go to where the puck is going to be. In order to meet those challenges of the future, we absolutely have to be very focused and strategic as to whom we are acquiring and why. I think the second aspect is that there is a very changing landscape around skill set. There's been a lot of attrition and there's also a lack of interest in embracing biomedical technology as a career prospect. The third aspect, I think, truly is the entire landscape of remote workforce. We never have had the opportunity to engage workers who are not going to be on site, which just broadens the entire geography as to whom we can acquire as we're looking forward to, to talent planning. And I think, realistically, we as an industry are sitting at the cusp of we're living in the most advanced technological healthcare landscape in the history of the planet. And the folk in this conference are there to shape it. Unfortunately, within med tech and in med devices generally, we're notoriously slow to adopt those tools for talent acquisition that other industries have really embraced. The motor industry, the um, mobile device industry. And so really it's incumbent upon us to become a lot smarter as to how we look forward to find the right folk to help us build that future. I think there may be, if medtech companies don't embrace very well described and if you attend my talk tomorrow, very well researched opportunities that exist that are almost solely based around remote workers and specifically looking at um, how we recognize and celebrate um, successes of remote, our remote workforce. The risk benefit, the benefit of having a remote workforce we saw through COVID the cost saving in actually having a physical space where our workforce resides needs to be balanced with an additional effort in training our middle management, our managers generally, to become more focused as to how we recognize and create that virtual water cooler where we can ha embrace folk without them physically being face to face, much like we're doing right now. I think it's, again, it's incumbent upon us. If we can put a man on the moon, and we can create the most, we can create a pacemaker that's the size of my fingernail, we can absolutely certainly make sure that our workforce who are working remotely don't feel that they're ostracized. This is my first summit. I can tell you for sure it won't be my last because it honestly feels like I'm swimming in the balsamic reduction. There are very many functionally specific conferences that exist and here we're seeing not only a very high powered group of folk, it's a small but mighty, but the really, the really unique perspective that I see is that cross-functional, cross-specialty expertise that is represented. So it's not just medical affairs, it's also quality and regulatory and marketing and folk from the C-suite. And I think that's what makes this so unique in that 
I have an opportunity to interact with a competitor CEO or a competitor chief of regulatory affairs, which ordinarily I would never ever have the opportunity to do. Um, the other unique aspect is the intimacy. There is a willingness to share. We're talking about our common gripes and our common goals with less of a focus on bottom line. This is more about what we are all focused on, which is patient centricity and advancing healthcare, medical safety, patient safety. And these are like-minded people in the room, and that is unique for me. Oh, it's just been fantastic. Uh, far better than I expected. I think the willingness of everybody to share, it feels like we've all, we have a company name on our badge, but no one is interested in the company name. It feels more like we're huddling around a common kitchen table and wanting to solve common problems. And that's been phenomenal. Th that networking opportunity uh, is, is really great simply because, again, there's that cross-functional interaction. I've learned so much. Uh, I've been thrilled that my experience within my company is not unique, but also I've really enjoyed the transparency. Uh, none of us really is sharing out of an NDA. None of us needs an NDA, but it's been thrilling to realize that our struggles are not alone. And I do think that ultimately, you know, the folk gathered in the room do want to better healthcare. We do want to improve patient safety. The barriers don't feel like they exist over here. Superb. And I'll give you a little bit of clarity because it does bring you into this. Right from sort of, as they say, soup to nuts, from the preparation, the pre-work, the selection of speakers, the variety of topics, the quality of the presentations, IT, audiovisual, all the back work, the venue is amazing. Honestly, it's been superb. And as I said, this is my first, it won't be my last.